I have been waiting a lot of years to ask you about 2014 when you decided to push Brad Kozlowski. Well, I think it was 15, wasn't was it? Was it 15? I think it was 15. This, this is the wrong date on Maybe. my paper. I don't know the exact year. I think it was 15. He, he it says it. Tyler, our producer, is saying it was 14. Uh, I know you love to correct me on here. I don't, but I don't I'm know. <laughs> I'm going to say it was 15. I think it was 15 because... I think it was 15. Because here, here, here's the deal. So in 15, I just felt like we had a lot of things go wrong. Everybody was talking about everything that we were doing wrong. Um, and we needed to change the direction of the conversation. Now, was this the right thing to do? I don't know. But what when we got great. done, when we got done, the conversation <laughs> was, not about, was not about me anymore. It was really about this chaos that that we decided. But definitely when we talk about those not so proud moments, uh, this is definitely one of those moments where you're like- This is at the top of the list? Yeah, this is pretty close to the top But of it the was list. epic. What do you mean? I'm so glad he did. So it was let's, hilarious. Let's set the stage a little bit because- Yes. Yeah, what, you go So ahead. what we're watching is the brawl that started the Harvicking. And basically, Brad Keselowski went down into turn one on a late race restart, shoved Gordon out, I think Gordon gets a flat tire. Yeah. At this point, Jeff is, this is his retirement year. He wants to, he's trying to get into the uh, championship round. That's right. And Brad <laughs> makes a dive bomb move. And now they're on pit road and they're talking and Jeff is hotter than a match. And uh, Kevin just gives a little, a little boop. Yeah. A little, well, a little boop. It's, it's one of those things. And, and we've talked to, we've talked on here a lot about um, there's more to it than just driving the car. And sometimes you have to, try to do different things to, to redirect the conversation or put somebody in the fire that's not in the fire that you're, you're competing against. And this was a, this was a very calculated moment. This was premeditated? I thought that we could capitalize on this to, to, oh, to, wow. to really turn the story on somebody else. But it was just, it didn't, it just didn't look good. But that's the way it worked out. It looked awesome. I thought it looked awesome. It turned I out, mean, it I mean, it was awesome to watch. It's not awesome to start, right? No. So how I premeditated? I mean, it had to have been a few minutes. I mean, minutes. I was leaning on the deck lid of the back of the car, watching everything go down. And I was Yeah, like, I remember you were like very I like, sly. I was like, there. oh man, get in there. Yeah. Get in there. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and next thing you know, there's a massive fight on, on pit road. And, You're like, and, whoopsie. <laughs> and they, they, they weren't talking about me anymore. So that was one of those calculations that I should have recalculated. I would recalculate today recalculate. and not, not advise you to, to be... Um, the one that that does that, but it it wound up changing the direction of the conversation. We went all the way to sure the did. all the way to the championship for that year, and and put ourselves in position to to win a championship. And I believe that was the year that Kyle Busch came back and beat us after it he broke his leg. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. Um, so it was actually a smart decision. Then. Yeah. Well, I don't in know. Smart, but can it worked out? Did you see Jeff Gordon just full on like bull rushing the big guy? Like, I don't know how little Jeff Corden is able to get through this man who looks like he's 285 pounds <laughs> yeah. and get a hand. It was a balance thing. <laughs> it was a balance thing? Balance. But we've had some big moments at, at Texas. We and, sure have. And that, that was a big moment uh, with, with the brawl and everything that, that had happened. But um, for, for me, when I won my truck race there, mm. everything comes with a story. When I won the truck race there, uh, I don't remember what year it was, but it was the only time I ever won there. But we, Ron Hornaday was racing for the Truck Series Championship mm -hmm. against, um, I don't remember who else, but we also raced Kyle Busch for the Owner's Championship every year. Yep. And Kyle, every time that we got on a racetrack, it was everything that you could do. To, if Kyle was winning truck races, I'd start running more truck races because I didn't like Kyle winning truck races. So we'd go out and start winning truck races and get our trucks back up to where it go. And then we, we'd start uh, beating Kyle. Kyle would go out and start running more truck races and he'd get his <laughs> trucks back. To, and it just, so back it was this forth. constant back and forth. But yep. it was the year Kyle got suspended for the cup race because he wrecked Hornaday under the caution. Yep. Yeah. So he wrecks Hornaday under the caution. I'm leading the race in, in the trucks and, and wound up winning the race. Well, on the radio, I was livid because Hornaday was going to win the championship that year. So it basically cost us the championship and I was mad. And I said on the radio, I said, if somebody doesn't go over there and kick his ass right now, I said, I am going to be completely disappointed in everything, everybody that is in that pit. Oof, well, man. I got mother function. <laughs> Josh is Josh going, Jones. He's going oh, after Josh Kyle Bush and, and he is... On his way to the garage and goes up into Kyle Busch's trailer and a NASCAR official pulls him, pulls him back. So, uh, pulls him out of the trailer, takes his hard card, puts him in the lounge of the, of the trailer. Oh boy. So I win the race and I'm just fuming, just waiting to get out of the truck. I get to, I get, to, I pull into victory lane and 
the first person that is at my window is NASCAR security. Mike from, remember Mike yeah, from Mike, NASCAR security? Yeah, yeah. Um, so he, he is the first one to my window, takes the window net down, leans in my car and he said, do not get out of this truck and make a scene. We have everything handled. And when you're done, you need to come to the NASCAR hauler. You're really getting scolded. And I was like, okay. So <laughs> okay. at that point, they had already decided, I guess, to suspend Kyle. Yeah. And everything was was handled at that point. But I didn't know my guy was sitting in the NASCAR lounge. <laughs> and I had to go retrieve Josh uh, because he had tried to beat up Kyle Bush. He's like, I was just doing what I was told to do. So um, what a good always. friend. Yeah, he is a good friend. Happy belated birthday to old Joshua yeah, Daniel yeah. Jones, by the way. Yeah. That's a funny story. That is great. Yeah. I don't think we can talk about Texas without uh, tipping the captain Greg Biffle, who is an animal, was just an animal at Texas. Like yeah. that was like his spot. And he yeah. comes back off the couch a yeah. couple years ago truck and race. races the truck race yeah. for Kyle <laughs> Bush and dominates him. That's yeah. Right. And I'm like, dude, like, I'm sorry, what? Like, you were just, you haven't raced in like two years. Mm -hmm. And he spanked him. And then it's like, all right, I'm good again. Very unique track, though. I was going to say, what are the keys to it? You know, you got a really flat corner. They change turns one and two. It's really wide and really flat. They're going to put the PJ1 down in the third groove like like they normally have. Turns three and four there, super banked, super bumpy. Uh, they've ground the bump a little bit in in three and four, but it's still still pretty bumpy. So the way that you drive it is just completely different from from one end to the other. Um, turns turn one is just one of those corners where you get, you just got to get the thing in there. It's unsettled <laughs> because the racetrack is flat. With the cup cars, it's a really tricky balance in the in the in the heights of the car uh, because you want the car to be as low as possible in one and two to gain as much grip as possible, uh, being low to the ground. And in three and four, the car wants to hit the ground because it's got so much more load than, than turn one and two. And so you have to, you have to balance keeping it off the stops and keeping it off the ground to keep it as low as possible in turns one and two, but cars want to get r- really tight in the middle of one and two there, the way that the wind blows always oh, yes. uh, blows, uh, you know, pretty good there towards the exit of turn two. So you never know what you're going to get there, but really difficult track to make your car handle good. Any similarities to other mile and a half like Vegas? Three and four is, is, you know, has some similarities to a typical mile and a half racetrack, but one and two is just really weird. It's a, it's a very flat corner. And when they widen the corner, when you go to the entry of the corner, it's really hard to look out the left side of the car and be able to see the apex of the corner. Like it's so far down there that you can't see it. And you just, so you just have to go in the corner and just keep turning until you, until you find the the (laughs) apex of the corner, because it's so far down there and you're so far out next to the wall. A lot of times you won't even go all the way out next to the wall unless you're unless you're running that second lane. Yeah, this place is treacherous, especially one and two. I think we'll see a lot of air, arrow games being played. Uh, we yeah. saw it at the end of last year. Like, that's how uh, the five wrecked, uh, right. going for the win against Bubba. That's kind of how Bubba ended up losing that race, too, is just getting someone on your door, and then they kind of suck you around, and then people are mad because they're like, you put it on my door, and it's like, yeah. well— it's kind of it's okay. a little bit of defense. Yeah, and that, that second so. groove, that second lane up there gains more grip as as you go through the day, and that that PJ one gets run in, and it becomes the 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 dominant groove. But you got to be able to, you got to be able to cut to the bottom and and pass people uh, if you're going to have one of the cars that that is going to win the race. But track position will be important. So you've been reflecting on some of the wins you've had there. There's been some strange things that have happened to you at this track as well. I think of the parachuter who damaged your car yeah. before the race. This was 2012. What do you remember about this whole thing? Well, I remember going to <laughs> to uh, driver intros and, and then I get to my car and there's no car. And I'm like, where's my car? Well, <laughs> where's my car? That guy's sandbag on the bottom of his flag just completely demolished the left side of my car. So they had to go weld the door back on my car before the race. So... Uh, wow. My car was was in the garage uh, getting repaired. They actually delayed the the start of the race so that we could fix our car um, because it was just one of those circumstances yeah. that was strange. unforeseen. Uh, Very strange. Yeah. And that was also the place that I got the $100 bill. Stuck, oh, stuck the 100 on bill the story. That's yeah. right. I yeah. So that's the track that, that I had a $100 bill get stuck on the front of my car and that's came funny. into the pits and it was still attached to the grill. There you go. I, so, I mean, thanks. we talk about error all the time and where that bag hit on the left side, like there was no like, oh, it'll be fine. Coming back like, from No, no, no. That, like yeah. you had no. to, like you 
had to go fix it immediately. Well, the door was broken. So yeah, the was phone good. was hanging out. Oh, the door was the, the wow. door was actually oh detached. <laughs> <laughs> they, those doors had a seam right in the middle yep. of them and at the top, and then it was actually just laid open. So mm. that's bigger than a parachuter. Got to watch out for those. Yeah, it was, it's a windy place. It's Coming a windy hot. place. Coming in hot. <laughs> Let's fast forward to 2018 when you took a selfie and gave the checkered flag to a young fan. I this did. was so cool. The kid looks stunned. I might add. I'm probably just like, what is happening to me? Yeah. Right what made now? you do this? I'm not sure. Uh, you know, it's kind of like that fight. It, just, I'm, I'm not sure what was the final deciding factor, but it was hey, just adrenaline. It going. was fun to to be able to just do something different and I love that. Pulled the kid out of the grandstand and and was able to uh, give him the flag and take a picture and and we um, I don't know it, it it's just one of those sporadic spur of the moment things that you just That's do a cool something one, different. So always fun to uh, to be able to do stuff like that. And you, I, I love the kids. Nothing against the adults, but the kids are way more fun to absolutely. interact with and sign yeah. autographs for. 100%. And love, you know, love the adults too, but the kids in, in that situation, that's something that keep that kid as a race fan for his whole life. I was going to say he will probably remember that for the oh, rest yeah. of his life. Yeah. What for a cool sure. moment. Do it for the kids. For sure. yeah. That's right. Hey, race fans. Thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.